My life gets flashed before my eyes. Is dinner better than breakfast? Princess the Bear here with Disney's Grand Floridian Resort because 1900 Park Fair is open. We've done breakfast, now it's time for dinner. So let's see how many dinner things we can eat in a night. Remember, she's vegan. I'm not. Let's go get some grub. Be sure to enjoy all of the magical characters. You heard the girl. Salad, salad, salad. I love a good rabbit food. Not just for rabbits, it's for bears too. Sometimes I like a little green in my teeth. Mm. Nice smashed tomatoes, you got some garbanzo. I just went all out on the salad. I like that citrus vinaigrette isn't too citrusy, it's in the right balance of citrus with the vinaigrette. It's, it's nice, it's given springtime on a carousel somewhere. Maybe not magic. Maybe like Disneyland. Maybe in a couple years. Three and a half out of five hours. Now we have some beautiful focaccia bread. There's a huge pile of it. I got an end piece. I'm so excited. It's sun-dried tomato. I'm just gonna take half of the top so Bear can try it. It's a little rough. Cheers to the bread. That gives good bread. It's very soft, it's very moist. Definitely one of my favorite precautions that I've had on Disney property. Like up there with Tony's for sure. I would give it a five out of five. It's a princess to be Here we have some sun-dried tomato focaccia. Focaccia, focaccia. It's nice and tasty, nice and fluffy. A light fluffy bread that's vegan. Seems it's so easy for some places over some others to tell a man nameless to make bread that's not a brick of sand. 1900 Park Fair can do it. The rest of you can do it. And I challenge you to do better or to just hire Aaron McKinnis to do it for you. This has been the Bear PSA. I'm giving that 3.75 out of 5 points. Bread, a little mini baguette, if you will. Nice crisp outside, soft inside is what I'm hoping for. Don't steer me astray. Earth Balance would love this bread. Without it, it's feeling kind of alone in the woods. Three out of five. Points. I did get Earth Balance, but I'm 
butter. I had to ask the chef for it specifically. It's not on the menu for my request, but it's here. Cheers. Embroidery on this skirt myself. It's gorgeous. I added a little something for every family member, but I was thinking that maybe I should add a little something for Theo Bruno over here. Yeah. I think that would be pretty nice, right? Maybe a couple little rats. <laughs> maybe one with a bucket and one with a spackle. I like that idea. <laughs> Stolen from the kids section, turkey meatballs. Now they do have pasta and marinara, so I could have made myself like a pasta marinara with turkey meatballs, but I wasn't really feeling pasta from the kids section. It's just plain pinna pasta with a marinara. Now turkey meatballs, that's something special. Ooh, that's a good bouncy ball. Tasty, the turkey is a very nice touch. I love meatballs made of different things. These meatballs were so last year, they're kind of boring. This is pretty tasty. Go ahead and get you a spoonful. Four out of five plus. Like most Disney buffets, we have a peel and eat shrimp with cocktail sauce. Now, peel and eat shrimp is a thing. It's kind of annoying to eat. It's kind of messy. But I like a good cold shrimp. Ooh. It's fresh, it's cold, it's given by you pride, is what it's given. I would give that three and a half out of five points. Now loaded baked potato salad, that is a new one on there. Baked potato salad at a Disney buffet is as regular as the characters that greet you. Now, a loaded baked potato salad, now that, that sounds interesting. It's so mayo-y, which is probably an issue for me, uh, but I see a ton of little things, some bacon in there, some other things in there. Let's see how it tastes. Mm. It literally tastes like potato innards. There's a little bacon in there, a little bit of butter. That's good. Even for as thick and mayo as it is, something that usually turn me off from potato salad, that. It's made with some soul. We give that four and a half out of five points. A nice broccoli slaw with some um, chickpeas in it. I think I see raisins in here. I, I don't know what's going on with this salad. Broccoli slaw can be interesting, but also go very, very wrong. That is not chickpeas. That's raisins in my slaw. I love slaw, like I really do. And the raisins in the slaw, they actually taste pretty decent. I just wasn't expecting fruit in my slaw and somehow I feel set up. Set up for failure. Luckily, it was good. Four out of five plus. Ooh. Thank you, sugar. I love all the blue that you're wearing, just like Thank the evening you. star. As long as you plan on making some wishes, right? You got yourself a real good wish, I hope. Yes. You know, if I learned anything from my best friend Lottie, that wish will keep the stars is sure to make all your dreams come true. You just have to put in a little bit of extra hard work, right? Just a little bit. That sounds good. We can go see Mama Odie together. She'll teach us how to dig down deep, I can tell you that. Dig a little deep. <laughs> Would y'all like to hop one up? the question looking at this drink which buffet has the best beverages they all basically run by the resort menu it's a couple options it's, they're in park but the drinks have never been fantastic is it tusker maybe oh we'll have to think on that one maybe in the meantime tara martin margarita the tahine helps with an average margarita it's got kick it's got spice It'll do. It'll do. Three out of five points. This is the daiquiri. This is the last vegan drink that is available on the menu outside of getting like wine or beer. Cheers. It's a very passion fruit forward. It almost tastes like you're drinking gold. I like that, but it's very sweet. It's good for dessert. I would give it a four out of five back. 
flavor passion fruit margarita looking like a martini in a martini glass anyway but uh it's looking thick and cloudy like our future oh, it's a passion fruit base Ooh. Mm. passion fruit base uh, daiquiri with rum in it it's a little tart it's giving like a little bit of like grapefruit in the back end but it drinks well it's just a slow sip I think they put it in this glass to make sure you take your time with it you're tempting to guzzle it because how sweet it is slow down you have all the time in the world three and a half out of five stars beautiful and blue today oh wonderful thank you very much and I will eat the clock is almost to midnight I'm sure you'll be home before midnight though right so you have a little bit more time would you like to join me So here we have some classic chicken noodle soup with the soup spoon. Now this morning when we came and did breakfast, I actually didn't have any spoons or any silver at all up on the buffet. I'm glad they've added them just a couple times this morning where I was left sand spoon. This looks like some chunky. I got minimum broth. I'm not looking to completely fill up here, but you got a nice white chunk chicken, celery, carrots, all the fixings of a classic tomato soup with broth. Now remember, like all things, the broth is trash. The soup is trash. That is proper to the soup. The broth is good, it's got some layers to it, but not too salty. There's a tendency to make chicken soup too salty. Just need all that. Then you've added the chicken already. You season the chicken, and you better be seasoning your chicken. With that, three and a half out of five pounds. We have Tiana's famous, Tiana's famous gumbo uh, with some jasmine rice. I'm assuming this is her father's recipe, but maybe it's her own twist. It's got her name on it after all, as it should. There's nice chunks in there, nice and beautiful. Good taste. Tiana's gumbo served medium spice. I would agree that it's a medium spice. Now for you spice heads, before you get all up in arms, it's like a two out of ten on the spice scale for the rest of us. But it is what I would estimate somewhere around a medium spike. It's got a nice flavor to it, nice consistency. The rice will help with that heat, so if you're not a heat person, add more rice. They serve them separately, so you just make it as much or as little rice as you want. It's giving good gumbo. All we need now is Giannis Famous Foods and Magic Kingdom that serves both gumbo, actual beignets, and we might have something more. Four to five plus. Butter their corn. 
They should just do plain corn. Now that I have earth balance, I can put my own butter on it. Cheers. It very much tastes like the arrabbiato you can get at Flower and Garden right now in the Italy Pavilion. It's not spicy, it's just marinara noodles. If you're into that, which I am, you will enjoy this. I'll give it a three out of five noodles. Pasta is for everyone because everybody can cook. It is something that would agree with a child's palate. It's as close to spaghetti as you're going to get at a Disney resort. Super soft noodles. I love that they super soft, basic, sweet marinara. Sweet, sweet. Three out of five. Minutes. Mexicano turned me on to kale a little bit with their amazing tacos I had recently. I don't know if this is gonna be like Rosa Mexicano level. Let's see. Oh, these garbanzo beans are falling apart. Cheers. It's not flavored poorly. Execution is impeccable for Grand Floridian. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just the texture for me. The kale, it's just not a vibe. It's like eating that like garnish that they they put at like Fridays and stuff, that like one weird lettuce leaf. Like, you don't know what it is. Is it cilantro? Is it is it lettuce? Is it who knows? Kale? Nobody knows. It's, it's like that. And that's not a vibe for me. So if you like kale, you'll love this. For me, since I don't like kale, I'm gonna give it a two and a half out of five kales. They just call this cal uh, kale. Maybe it'll give me superpowers. Next thing you know, they'll be putting kale on pizza. This is a weird concoction. So this is kale, olives, and chickpeas? Yes. Those are things I never expected to be in the same salad. But here we are. It's a very earthy salad. Something about kale is just, I mean, all obviously lettuce is from the earth, but something kale is like, it bakes in the dirt. Now the olives do help with that, that sort of like pickled, like saltiness sort of like helps with that, but uh, the chickpeas, those three things together just feel like you put three people in a room that don't get along. I'm just not feeling it. Two out of five applause. We have some Moroccan couscous. It's couscous salad is always served cold. I don't know why. It's, couscous is amazing hot. Israeli or Moroccan couscous. I love them both. Wow. I don't think I've ever had couscous that is so saffron forward. It's very saffron. If you don't know what saffron tastes like, you're definitely going to experience it here, but you're also not going to be able to place it. For me, I'm Persian, we bleed saffron. This flavor is unmistakable. How they were able to put so much in this is beyond me, but it's pretty good. And the couscous is cooked very well, it just melts in your mouth. I would give it a 4 out of 5 couscous, it's very tasty. Couscous with fruits and stuffs. It's yellow, high yellow. If you can get the ratio of like the fruit and everything else and a couscous done correctly, I love it chill. I know that may be an unpopular opinion, but chill couscous for me, this is a vibe sometimes. Something like a height, hot sometimes too, but sometimes cold is okay too. This is all right. I don't think I could do a ton of it, but I would definitely want it on my plate. Three and a half out of five minutes. No, my palate has not turned into that of a six-year-old. It was always the palate of a six-year-old. Even at six, I ate everything. Pancit, oysters, all kinds of seafood, whichever. Basically, I robbed the kids section. Uh, I wasn't going to go back to the kids section, but I saw they had pizza. It wasn't that odd. 
but they had it on a um, pizza stone. So I thought it might be interesting to see this. You don't normally see it sitting on a pizza stone, normally it's just on a plate or something. This, I'm hoping it's like extra crispy, but we'll see. Actually, that feels like fresh almost on the oven. It's not like fresh or even hot, but it's not pizza that feels like it's been sitting. I think that pizza stone helps keep the crispiness and the softness of the crust. That's what I really was expecting. Three and a half out of five cloth. It's just plain pepperoni. But the craving pizza, they got you. Now to ensure that it wasn't a fluke, I also got cheese pizza. Because who doesn't love a nice cheese pizza? Because you know it's good never. Three out of five cloths. The pepperoni has a slight edge over the cheese. This is probably blasphemous, but I got a single chicken nugget. They have a little kid's chicken nugget bar with three sauces. They have ketchup, which awesomely enough, the ketchup has a vegan symbol on it, so if you wanted ketchup, I do have ketchup for you at the kids station. They also have a barbecue sauce. I got the honey mustard. The honey mustard, obviously, not vegan. But these are chicken nuggets. So, some interesting thick breading. That's, honey mustard is also a very interesting color. It's juicy enough. How bad could it be? Hyper breaded. The honey mustard is given like Ken's honey mustard, like that sort of honey mustard, that consistency. It's good chicken. I was worried with the breading being like it was to be like super dry on the inside, but it's super moist. And if you're a chicken nuggets person, maybe you don't like some of the other stuff on the, on the uh, buffet because some of it is a little different for people that don't expand their palates very much. Nothing wrong with that. I like what you like. But if you have issues with things like gumbo or curry or things like that, you do have pizza and chicken nuggies to your heart's delight. I would give that three and a half out of five pounds. Here we have a curry roasted curry spice chicken. Comes in a gigantic vat. Now if you wanted to, you can get rice with it. It's right next to the gumbo, so you get rice, which are curry chicken as well. They didn't have a whole lot of sauce in the bottom of the pot, but I really only wanted chicken anyway. But that works out for me, but I wish they had some extra sauce to sort of like ladle over the top. Ooh. Now a roasted chicken. I expect that about that. A curry roasted chicken? That is delicious. It's nicely roasted and simmered in the curry. The curry is like soaked all the way through the chicken. That is a chicken curry delight. 4.75 out of 5 claws. If you see me at the buffet loading up my plate with every piece of chicken that's in that pot, mind your business. Plant-based style. It's sweeter carrot than I was expecting. Like it's in a, some sort of a or something. Like a sweet sauce. So that's not bad. Look at that. Three and a half out of five pounds. Now we have some green beans. The chef said these were fire, so. Children, eat your veggies. Because if Bear has to eat veggie he doesn't like, so do you. At least it's not peas. 
I don't really hate the way that it's seasoned. It's got a nice little herb to it. Um, the crispy is fine. I don't love it though. There's nothing wrong with it. It tastes fine. I just not loving the texture. Two out of five blocks. Tusker House is my forever favorite steamed rice. Now I did ask, because um, most buffets they'll do an off menu like fried rice for you. I did ask for that. They don't do off menu here. So just steamed rice for us. Cheers. It is just like the Tusker rice and I'm here for that. It's like one of my favorite rices. Something about the way they make jasmine rice at Disney World. It's either firing on all cylinders, cooked perfectly, not too starchy, soaked, or it's like super crunchy. There's no um, in between. It's either really good or really bad. Thankfully we've got a good match today. It's Persian fruit. Give it a four out of five rices. The haters will say that white rice is inferior. I'll say you've never had good white rice. If the fragrance like wafts up through your nostrils with a good Japanese rice. If you haven't had good rice on a buffet this good, I agree with the princess since Tusker. I think Tusker is the edge, but it's still like this close. Four out of five. Minutes. vegan dishes for dinner, for breakfast, it was a tofu scramble, for dinner it's zoodles with impossible in it. You couldn't have just put tofu or something, you had to put impossible and you had to make it zoodles. I guess so it's gluten free too. It's so, this is so hard to pour. Wow. Somebody went really heavy on the pepper with that. It's spicy. It's like a three out of ten on the heat scale. Definitely not what I was expecting. It, it tastes like lasagna to me, which is not what I was expecting. A lot more flavorful than I was expecting. Yeah, the, the zoodles are, they don't fall apart. They crunch when you eat them. The impossible has got a nice little sear on it. It's just really spicy. Like, just spicier than I expected it to be. I will give it a three out of five zoodles. I might put that on like some bread, maybe the pong focaccia, spicy on spicy, and then like do something nice like that. And yeah, it might be a vibe. This time right here, this impossible with zoodles gives me hope for my own home cooking. Because it looks like they're having the same issue with zoodles that we do. You make zoodles, cooking them is hard because they always come out to like a mushed amalgamous mess. Very peppery for no reason, like, like the cat fell off the pepper or something. It was just like overpowering the flavor. Like the flavor of the zoodles, it's got like a nice Italian to it. The impossible's got a nice flavor, but like you just get pepper and then it just really overrides everything else. Say like a, almost like a virus, like the Matrix style. Uh, I had hoped for this one, but this batch was maybe not, not a great one. I mean, you can see how it evolves over time. Opening day snafus happen. For now, it's a disappointment. Two out of five plus. So, mac and cheese. White mac and cheese. Not that nice amber colored gold. You have white mac and cheese. This is going to require a double dose of the magic pills because I don't want to croak. I will be. Taking the smallest bite as your lactose stuntman. Smaller than that. It's good, creamy mac and cheese. I still got nothing on hoopty and garden bread. Good enough. Three and a half out of five plus. Next up we have this sausage roasted in garlic, which is interesting. It's just garlic, based on something with like cabbage at the bottom. 
Go ahead and take this. Ooh, nice and crispy. Looks good. Let's see if it tastes good. Wow. Didn't think rusty and garlic made much of a difference. Looks like a strong garlic slap in the face, followed by the favorite dish, juiciness and salsa. Still a bit greasy. Honestly, it's not bad. 3.75 of five. What Disney buffet would be complete without some sort of roasted salmon? Disney, you own an aquarium. Now, I'm not, I'm not at all saying eat the aquarium fish. Leave the aquarium fish alone. However, you do know fish. You know you have other kinds of fish, right? You don't have to serve salmon at every single character diner. It's a cod, it's a swordfish. Something. Ooh. Saffron. Lots of saffron. Like a tsunami of saffron. And this poor fish got caught in it. It's a shame because the fish is cooked wonderfully. I do not like it. Two and five points. have the prime rib. They serve prime rib at a lot of Disney buffets. This one is cooked medium. Now there is a horseradish cream. But the cream part of that sort of keeps me away from it. But they do have a hunter sauce. This seems to be their signature sauce here. Uh, probably should have just got a bowl and heap it on the plate. But mistakes were made. We committed these mistakes. This mushroom based sauce. I'm going to load these mushrooms up. I'm gonna fold it over like so. Give it a little dip. And we're gonna see if this prime rib is really in its prime. And the hunter sauce is basically like a mush, a really thin mushroom gravy with mushrooms floating in it. Not the ideal kind of mushroom, but it does sort of help with the savory. The sauce sort of bounces out. Salty with the savory. The prime rib is prime rib. Disney's fascination with prime rib and carving stations in this place will never cease to amaze me. The best carving station still on property if you look in a buffet, it's still gonna be Boma, by far. And if not even close. I would give that 3.75 out of 5 bucks. Here we have the pen shutter. Apparently this is the only place on property you can get this. They make this here in house. It is a rolled pork, rolled in chimichurri in layers. They cut you off a nice chunk of the pork and a bit of the crispy skin to try. Now, they do have the array of sauces you can go with this. They have uh, the house made steak sauce. They have the hunter sauce and they have the whole scratch cream. I thought I would just try it solo dolo with the crispy skin. See how it is. My life just flashed before my eyes. The short, bare life that it's been. The pochetta is fine. The skin gave me flashbacks of that horrible pork belly that you've been here for a while. I've heard me talk about they had a Halloween horn a few years ago with the candy outside, how like glass like and stabby that was. Maybe eat the skin on its own. Maybe. I'm gonna get this pork one more try. Sand skin. That skin had me scared for my life. Flavor well, leaning a bit too much towards the dry side. It's okay, I would definitely take it over the prime rib. We've had better things at better carbon stations. I would give it 3.75 by 5 plus. We have creamy mashed potatoes that they have on the buffet. These are not have a plant-based symbol, so there's dairy in these. So be careful. They do seem super, super creamy. Creamy and buttery potato business. If you're looking for the creamiest of cream potatoes, apparently this is where they keep them. Three and a half out of five points. I wish 
that we were having the breakfast double muffin, double chocolate muffin, because that was fire. Um, also made by the Grand Floridian Bakery. They make all the desserts for breakfast and dinner is this coconut cake. I don't know why I always gotta put coconut, but coconut cake, passion fruit, and guava with a little star, because you're a star. Now, I, I kind of want to just break it open. I wanted to see if there was something inside, but there's nothing. I do like that it's shiny. Dazzling, it's sparkling, it's passion fruit, it's covered in coconut and sprinkles. Edible sprinkles, of course. Uh, the princess's face struck fear in me. But we gotta try all the things. My soul was not prepared for the level of coconut in that. You're thinking that coconut. It's just the sprinkles on top. And that is not the case. The cake is filled with coconut. It's just coconut. With a little tiny bit of passion fruit. It's like 80% coconut, 20% passion fruit. He's more passionate, less nut. That means two things. I would give that two out of five points. and soft as it should be that is delicious I'm glad it's plant based the Grand Floridian Bakery is the same bakery responsible for the gingerbread house we did every Christmas here in this very resort they're a very very skilled team and then chosen this cookie it may only be chocolate chip but it's leagues better than coconut cake four out of five points chocolate cake. Now they do have a vanilla, but it's a vanilla cream aglanese. And the cream scared me off, so we're just getting a warm vanilla cake. Got a little bit of powdered sugar on top. And chocolate on the inside. It's like double chocolate. Double double. That's a sort of warm chocolate cake. It's taking me back to the signature chocolate cake at the new Turf Club menu. That menu is a complete revamp. And it's bringing me back. There's like a mini version of that. That's how big the chocolate punch is. Big punches come in small sizes, apparently. Four out of five bucks. Here's the signature dessert. You have the Grand Floridian Fancy Air. It is a little chocolate medallion with the Grand Floridian logo on a toasted marshmallow and what looks like a little mini cake. It's almost Instagram ready. Look at that. It's like you're almost s'more. 
Okay. It's a lemon cake. Ghost and marshmallow chocolate. A lemon cake. I had some more flavor until I got to the bottom. That's not bad. It's a light lemon. I don't love lemon cake, but the combination of the three is actually quite good. I would give it four out of five paws. If it's one thing they do here, they want you to wish on stars. They're putting stars on everything. Even this little mini vanilla cupcake, again, with the edible sprinkles all in the icing and the cake itself. I'm in it the princess way. The way that she trained me after years and years of tutelage. As her apprentice, one day I will get this right. Aha. Aha. The top. That's a classic milk cupcake with icing. No more, no less. But very good. Icing is top tier. Cake is nice and moist. Not too fluffy. Not falling apart. Holds together well enough. It's a good cupcake. Three and a half out of five. Plus. Last up we have the fudge brownie. Chocolate fudge brownie. Got a little decoration on top. Some different colors here. This is white chocolate, chocolate, and then the brownie on the bottom. Go ahead and try to get both chocolates and get a little bit of this topping. I like that it didn't go overboard with the chocolate. The brownie is already a lot of chocolate, very dense. Too much chocolate would have overpowered. That's a nice ratio. Honestly, if I was gonna pick between this and the chocolate cake, I would probably pick chocolate cake. So this will be a close second. Four out of five points. Here we have the infamous at this point. Infamous Str Grand Floridian Strawberry Soup. It's what everybody's been waiting for, it's what everybody's been clamoring for. Waiting for this restaurant to reopen for four years, it's been closed. The last of the Disney restaurants to reopen, and at long last, they are granting you the privilege of paying for character dining so you can have this soup again. Now, we did check the allergies. The soup has dairy in it, the vegetarian. The strawberries are vegan, the whipped cream is vegetarian. All in all, it's a vegetarian item. It is not vegan. None for the princess, more for me. And they have spoons up there now. I know that a lot of you are gonna come for me, especially you strawberry soup kind of source. But strawberry soup is just thin strawberry yogurt. I don't know how else to explain it. If you've never had it before, that's what you can expect. It's strawberry yogurt, thinned out, the toppings of your choice. You don't have to have the strawberries on if you don't want to. You don't have to have the whipped cream if you don't want to. Obviously, whipped cream, I'm lactose intolerant. It's no for me. I'm never gonna say no to extra strawberry on anything. But it's good. I'm giving it a 4.75 out of five claws. It's tasty, it's here. Come get it. We dinnered at the fair. I think dinner was much better than breakfast. And if I was to recommend one, I would recommend dinner. But honestly, I don't know if I would recommend 1900 Park Fair when there's places like Tosker and Boma and Crystal Palace. Actually, don't go to Crystal Palace for dinner. Go there for breakfast. But there's other character, uh, Akershus. I love Akershus. Other places that have a bigger buffet, more offerings. You have to tailor your stuff. character dining to what you're actually looking for. If you're looking to be characters, characters are a top tier. If you're coming to eat, oof, there are better buffets. I will say the zoodles tasted better when I added rice to it and I was eating the rice and the zoodles together. Very peppery though. So I don't know what was happening with that batch, but I hope it was a fluke. We talked to some other people that we were, when we were wandering the restaurant and outside of the restaurant, they also agreed with us. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe it was just a bad batch. Yeah. Everybody thought it was too spicy though. 
deficit. But I want to know what you guys think. Now that 1900 Park Fair is reopened, I want to know, do you feel like Disney World is healing? What do you miss? Does it look good? Does it look the same as it did before? Let us know in the comments below. As usual, if there's anything else you'd like to see us do, that will always be the place to find us. Hit the notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. We will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe and like this video and comment because Bear's not going to eat himself anywhere. We are completely done. We've done every single Disney restaurant at least twice at this point. Every single one, bar, table service, quick service, we're done. We're done. So there's nothing left to do. Bear's not going to eat himself anymore. The chapter is closed. I am uneatable. But you heard the girl. <laughs>